Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Huddle Up with Gus. I'm your host, former NFL quarterback Gus Farratt, and welcome to the new 1631 Digital News Studio. You know, some people say, no news is good news. Well, I say to those people, you've never read 1631digitalnews.com. Go to 1631digitalnews.com to get your latest news, sports, music, and entertainment. And maybe even listen to your favorite podcast, Huddle Up with Gus. Check it out today at www.1631digitalnews.com. Welcome to what surely will be a doozy of a matchup right here, sports fans. Whether your game is on the gridiron, at the diamond, or on the links, we can only say... Welcome to this week's Huddle Up with Gus. 15-year NFL quarterback Gus Barat's passion for sports has taken him on the field and behind the benches, playing for seven NFL franchises with 114 TDs under his belt. Gus knows who the players are and how the games are won. Oh, it's not every day you get to hang out with an NFL quarterback, huh? Okay, sports fans, from the decked out and plush 1631 Digital Studios, it's kickoff time, so snap your chin straps on and Get ready to huddle up with Gus. Strange variety, but again, a big play to a left Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Huddle Up with Gus. I'm your host, Gus Farratt, 15-year NFL quarterback, and I want to welcome you to the 1631 Digital News Studio. I appreciate you joining us. I also want to thank Sounder FM, our new podcast platform. All their great technologies have really put Sounder mm-hmm. FM ahead of the rest. So thank you to Sounder and their new transcription technology. And also want to say again that we're hoping and we're excited to partner with Manscaped.com. So go to Manscaped.com, put in my code Gus Ferrat, all caps, G-U-S-F-R-E-R-O-T-T-E, get 20% off and free shipping. So go get their new lawnmower 4.0 and take care of all your needs. All right, everyone. So today's guest is someone who has uh, an incredible resume. He's a he's somebody who's like me. He's been all over this great country of ours, and uh, sports has shaped his life in an incredible way, and it, and it's shaping his kids' lives. So we're going to get into so much. But today, I want to talk with. I want to share with you, uh, Greg Nard. Greg has written a book, Elite, um, and, and it's about raising high-level athletes. Uh, so, Greg. It is great. Uh, now you're the senior vice president of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, you, I mean, there's just so much to talk about in your career, um, but I want to thank you so much for joining me on Huddle Up with Gus. Well, Gus, I sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's, it's been an amazing journey uh, being in sports, and I obviously started out playing and in, in, uh, playing at a young age, uh, and then end up going to the University of Maryland. Uh, playing basketball there. So it's just been, it's been awesome. It seems like I'm living a dream. Yeah. I mean, your, your uh, career is, is pretty incredible. So tell me about where it started and that memory you have of growing up in Ohio uh, where you fell in love with sports, because we all have that first time or that whether it was somebody in our family or it was an idol we had, and you were telling us a little bit about how you used to go to Bengals training camps, but tell me a little bit about how you fell in love with sports. Well, you know, it, it all began really at uh, just a sports family. Uh, my dad, who played basketball uh, at the high school level and uh, had a lot of success and had a, two other brothers and a sister who played sports as well. So it was just kind of part of our DNA uh, that we play sports and we play multiple sports uh, I ended up playing, uh, playing bat. I played actually. I played every sport, and then um, my high school career, I ended up playing just football and basketball. Matter of fact, I ended up I get verbally committing to play football at Ohio State as a quarterback. Oh and wow! Decided at the last hour to play basketball at the University of Maryland. Yeah, they don't they don't hit you as hard in in basketball as they would have in <laughs> the Big Ten. Right. Exactly. That was my thinking as well. Plus, I wanted to stay warm. Is uh, you know, coming from Ohio, where it's cold, uh, cold winters. I wanted to be in an area where it was just a little bit more warm. But 
uh, still a Buckeye at heart. Uh, loved the University of uh, or Ohio State University, but really that's where it began. It began at at, at home uh, with family and that that, that all played sports. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals used to have the training camp. Um, got getting a chance to kind of watch them really um, uh, in the training camp and getting to know lots of players during that time. Uh, one of my role models uh, back then was Gary Williams, who played wide receiver for the mm -hmm. Ohio State Buckeyes and ended up playing for the Bengals. So just really a lot of positive things that happened for me. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of it's just dreaming, you know, being around people who are successful uh, in the sport and um, having an amazing community like Wilmington, which is, you know, probably back in, back at, during that time, you had probably about seven to 10,000 people who just, just loved on you. And it was kind of like that village. So that's where it all began. Now, did you guys go out, like when you were a kid, did you go out, like, have a bunch of other kids that you would go out, ride your bike, go play ball with, whatever it was out there? Like, that's how I grew up, that whatever we could do every day we were out playing a new sport. Man, Gus, you're right on. That's all we did. We played sports all day long. I would be at the park. Uh, I would, first of all, I would be at home, and I probably lived about 15 minutes from the park. I used to take my basketball, I would dribble all the way down with my right hand, and then dribble all the way back home with my left hand. And then we would be at the park all day. And then yep. in the evening, we would be playing baseball because it was the baseball season. So we would play baseball in the evening. Uh, so – uh, again, sports in a small town, that's just what we did. We just played all, multiple sports year-round, all day long. Yeah, so you talk, you know, your your new book, Elite, is talking about raising kids to be high-level athletes. Like, I just remember, like, I grew up in a small town of like you, right? Five to 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And nobody was talking like that, right? And that's a different way because I think of social media, the internet. It doesn't matter where you're from that you can become a high level athlete if you have those dreams and obviously the talent to get you there. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about like your childhood was different than what you're writing about now. Yeah. It's so much, it's so much different. Uh, first of all, the name of the book is called, uh, and you guys are first to know uh, the name and, and we're going to drop that uh, in some of the uh, social media platforms, but the name of the book is the ultimate assist. And it's oh, really awesome. helping our children succeed in sports and in life. Uh, yeah. but, 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 but Gus, to your point, you know, when we were growing up, you know, we played multiple sports first and foremost, and um, uh, we didn't have trainers. Uh, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't play sp one sport year round. Um, we were able to use different muscles. Uh, today, um, youth sports today, it's, it's so demanding on our young people. And um, in some cases, uh, or in a lot of cases, um, uh, what I'm trying to do here with this book is really just help parents understand um, uh, and enhance their child's dream uh, while helping them raise a healthy and successful and social, socially responsible person. Because again, it's so demanding. Um, you know, you're playing year round, you get your own trainer, um, you know, the cost of the sport, um, the travel, uh, kids are traveling around the country. Uh, back in the day when you and I were playing, Gus, we didn't travel. We no. traveled. We stayed locally. We we're playing against, uh, you know, folks in our community. Today, kids are not traveling around the U.S. and some are traveling around the world with the USA USA sports, uh, basketball, baseball, football, and volleyball. So it's it's a different different ball game. And what we're trying to do with the book, the ultimate assist, is really it's uh, how can we raise our young people to understand, or how how can we help our parents understand the importance of preparing these young people for life after sport? Use sport as a platform because it's an amazing. But there's so many transferable skills from what we do in sport, for example, communication, teamwork, being a great teammate, to back into a great husband, right, and a great coworker. Um, 
that's what we're trying to do. Just just tell that story of of, of the role of, and also tell that story of again how to succeed in the transferable skills. Oftentimes we're we're learning learning more today, and probably over the last five to seven years about the mental health piece uh, and how mental health has affected uh, athletes. And I can I know you you guys have been around you know many many athletes and just like I have and uh, from the high school to the collegiate to the pro level of of folks who struggle when the sport is all over and it's done. Uh, so again, the book is going to talk about that uh, piece a little bit. It's going to also talk about the role as a parent, you know, as a parent, you know, we got a role, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think that, I think that what's significant is that if you can communicate with the parents, because they need to understand that there's so many other things that you can do in sports. You may not be the athlete that ends up between the white lines out there, Mm -hmm. but there's so many other things. I mean, I look at your career, even mine when I'm done playing, right? That there's so many things that we can do in sports besides that athlete on the field, but sports gives us that base to learn about all that stuff. And, and, you know, from a trainer to an equipment guy, to the marketing people, to the ticket sales, sport management, there's so many things you can do. And I think that's great that the parents need to understand that, you know, hey, your kid may not be that 1% that goes on to play at an elite level, mm-hmm. that's right. but, but you can give them such a good base and a foundation that you're going to let them just grow from there. And I mm-hmm. think that you, what you're doing is, is incredible because I, I love that. It, you know, it's not just the kids that we're focusing on. I love that you're focusing on the parents as well. Well, you know, it's, if you can go into a, a gym uh, over the weekend – um, where there's tournaments being played at every sport. And this book is about every sport, not just basketball or football or baseball. It's about just youth sports in general. Right. Uh, what we're seeing in the gyms today, it's almost, it, it hurts. My, it's sad. It's it sad. is hard. It's sad and it's ex- extremely hard because you're seeing uh, parent and coaches uh, going back and forth. You're seeing fights in the, in the stands with parent and parent. Uh, you see parents going after referees. What are we teaching our young people today? And to me, one of the roles, as I talk about the role as a parent, uh, and your parent, your role is pretty simple. Unless you played at a collegiate side or play at the pro where you can teach your kid that particular sport. But right. if you have not, your role is real simple. Be that great Uber driver. Be yeah. the OPM. Be the nurse. You know, that's your role. And then be in the stand and support and encourage your kid opposed to yelling at your kid. You would see parents on the sideline running up the sidelines trying to have conversations with uh, with their kid. With You're teaching your kid, all right, I'm not going to respect your head coach. Yeah. Listen to me as I'm walking up the sideline with you. This is the craziest thing. And, about, and the reason why I'm writing this book seven years ago, I'm like – this has to change. If not, yeah. it's going to get to a point where it's going to be, you know, nobody wants to play. And if you look at some of the uh, the research that you're finding today, a lot of kids are walking away from sports. Yeah, that's, that, yeah that's the whole point of it, right? you got to have great coaches. Mm-hmm. Parents are also coaches as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need to listen yeah. and not say anything. That was hard for me. You know, I had to learn how to do that. There was nothing that I ever read or Somebody told me because my dad was not that way, right? But I learned how to be empathetic, how to understand other people from when we grew up. You know, we didn't have coaches like you said. We didn't have trainers. We didn't have people tell. You went out with 20 of your buddies. Mm -hmm. You played baseball, basketball, whatever. Guys got knocked down. There were fouls. You figured it out. But there was no hatred. I don't remember that. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, we sometimes, you know, you get a little heated, but we always left the place or came back the next day and played again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like kids are learning what they need to learn from the bad situations. Like you said about the, from the parents in these gyms and these courts Mm -hmm. and the parents could have such a big role in keeping those kids because one bad experience for a kid, they don't want to come back and play anymore. They don't want to come back. 
And, and I would talk a little bit about the girls side. On the girls side, we're just losing girls left and right because, again, it's a, girls think a little different than we do. I know for myself because I have two daughters, yeah. uh, but just, you know, competitive, right? And the screaming and yelling, girls, they just don't like that, right? No. And that's okay. I know that because I, I have to deal with two of them uh, on my own. <laughs> but going back to, you know, you, you, you made a, a really good point about, you know, just going back to the role. Um, I was like you, my first daughter, man, you know, I wasn't, wasn't a great, wasn't great. I had to learn how to be a great dad. Yeah. Uh, to my daughter, who's a really good basketball player, after games, didn't know how to talk to her. And then I I, I sat in a seminar uh, with a uh, a group called Positive Coaching Alliance, who helped me uh, have conversations to with my daughters after games, or during practices, or what to say you know, the week leading up to the game is one of the best things that probably ever happened to me as a parent, because yeah. I would think I was going down the same route that a lot of pe- a lot of parents go to go down today. And I do somewhat understand why parents are going and are acting the way they are. they're acting is because they're spending so much money. Because they're spending, you know, five thousand oh a year, you know, they're taking my if my dad had to spend that money, I might never put plates. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I wouldn't be here today. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> you know how many times I rode my bike to Little League? Oh, jeez. Like, you know, it wasn't like, uh, you know, you were – somebody was paying you to go – you know, yeah. we had to go pay to play. Like, they, yeah, we paid to, to get into the league, like your $20 admission, right, for the league or something. But, man, I, I – if my dad would have had to pay, like, travel and all this gas money, he would have – no. No, you know, I, I, that's I how my, I love this. My, I remember my seventh grade year, eighth grade year in, uh, in middle school. It's um, my older brother uh, just came back from college and he had leather shoes. He says, I got some shoes for you, bro. I'm like, okay, <laughs> awesome. Pull out the leather shoes. They're beautiful. I guess there were three sizes too big for me. <laughs> right. But I wore them. During games only because <laughs> right. I had the old canvas converse. Oh, yeah. yeah. But to your point, you know, I, I, I like you, I, I rode my bike all around town. That's my way of transportation uh, back in the day. And again, it's I know it's a different ball game. Uh, and, and there's some amazing parents. Let me I, I should say there's some amazing parents who are doing amazing things out there, too, in that youth sports world. So I don't want to take. Uh, say that all parents are uh, have not figured it out. There's a lot of parents who have figured it out, but just some of the ones who I've seen over the time, again, this is going to help every parent who has kids playing in sports. And there's going to be a nugget in there that I, I really believe that you'll take away from the ultimate assist. Yeah. The ultimate assist sounds great because that's, that's what it's all about. And especially with coaches, right? The coaches need to, it's so hard for coaches because all of a sudden they have to deal with this kid and all the other kids on the team. And then they got 25 parents screaming at them, screaming at these kids. Mm-hmm. Coaches need to learn too. You know, Absolutely. you know what I mean? They just, mm-hmm. because you know, the X's and O's doesn't mean you know how to be a good coach, right? There's mm-hmm. a lot that goes into it. So um, I can't wait to um, read the ultimate assist. So, Tell me about when you're in high school now and you, and you're, you're, you you talked a little bit about, hey, I signed a letter of intent to go to Ohio State to play quarterback, and then you decide to go play, instead, go play basketball at Maryland. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about that process for you. Well, it was difficult. It was, uh, well, I verbally committed to go to Ohio State to play football. And I, I actually, I told, um, it was uh, Jim Trussell, who's the quarterback yeah. coach at the time. Uh, Earl Bruce was the head coach. I told uh, Coach Trussell that if I play football, I'm coming to Ohio State. Uh, in the meantime, um, Joe B. Hall was the coach at Kentucky, and he just got let go, and a new coach came in. And then at the last hour, I get a call the same day I signed with the University of Maryland with Coach Lefty Drizel sitting in my house because I really wanted to go to Kentucky to play basketball. Yeah. And the reason why, you know, I, I love all sports. Uh, football was, a, you know, 
I was probably a better football player than I was a basketball player, especially if you ask anybody in Ohio <laughs> because they wanted me to go to Ohio State. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to follow my passion. Uh, my passion was I loved the game of basketball. I grew up with the basketball. It just seemed like that was just – that was the Nard household, uh, basketball yeah. in terms of the sport. Uh, but I just love, you know, I love being inside. I love the fans kind of hovering over you. And, um, you know, we played in a competitive league and I just thought I was the next Magic Johnson. I'll be honest with you. Oh man. I had those. Ma- Do you remember when those Converse Magic Johnsons came out? Oh yeah. <laughs> they were like 400 pounds, but they, I, I, cause we were purple and gold like the Lakers. Right. So yeah. everybody in our team went and got them. The coach is like, why are you guys so slow today? I'm like, we all got our Magic Johnsons and they're way heavier. <laughs> right. <laughs> I loved high school basketball coming out to the music. And you, I remember when, uh, we finally got the 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 rip off like pants, the sweats. Right. right yeah. And, like man, I, I it just was like a big thing. It was it was amazing. I mean, Friday Night Lights is one thing. It's an amazing experience, right? Best ever. Yeah, but Best when you ever. got a, when you got a full gym and kids are holding up signs and all your friends from high school are in there, and it's just it's just an amazing feeling. Yeah. But it is. And I, again, I, I, I love uh, every aspect uh, of, of the basketball experience. Uh, but I tell everybody to this day, because, uh, again, we played on Friday nights, as you were alluding to, uh, Gus. Um, Friday nights, we played the game time was at eight o'clock. Um, and there's nothing like coming from our locker room, walking down. And uh, we didn't have a tunnel, but we had a, walk, right. a walkway. You had the cheerleaders. You had the marching band. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yeah, boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but both sides of the stands were full. It was amazing experience and uh, probably the best ever high school experience in terms of just the, the sport piece of it. This oh, yeah. I, I lived right by the football field mm-hmm. growing up. So, like, I mean, from the time I was a kid, we I was going to high school football games. And I remember when they got the lights. I remember, you know, turning the lights on when it started getting dark. And just it was just always an, a great experience. And I've always loved it. And football was all – mine was football and baseball. Yours was football and basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew always mine was going to be football. But uh, so tell me – so now you're in Maryland. What was your experience at, like at Maryland? And, and what were your – kind of thoughts going through college like am uh, am I going to play at the next level or like what kind of like I always wonder how guys were because I wasn't a great student I wish I would have been a better student now you know you don't understand that sure tell me about that for you what that was like and did you have the forethought to say I'm gonna you know because I know you graduated in communications from Maryland Mm -hmm. well you know it's uh you know reason why uh, I went to University of Maryland. One is a great conference uh, uh, from an s- athletic standpoint. Uh, right. And in the ACC, you got Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, Wake Forest. It's just great basketball every, yeah. every game, right? You had to bring it every game. Uh, and I thought if I if I played at that Power Five conference, the chances of playing in the NBA were pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, but when I went on the, the when I went on the visit uh, to the university, there's a couple of things that resonated with me, and probably the reason why well, not probably the reason why uh, I went to the Maryland uh, went to Maryland. One's the obviously playing the ACC, but the academics were were amazing as well. But I'm driving that. Let me. I guess let me rewind here for a second. Growing up in a small town like Wilmington, it's. Yeah. Uh, and not very diverse. It's probably uh, maybe two percent of people, one percent of people who look like me. Right. I go into the DC, uh, DC, Virginia area, and I'm driving on driving on the Beltway, and I'm seeing people who look like me with nice cars. And as you and I were talking earlier, we just didn't have a lot growing up. Right. Like, well, if they can do it here, why can't I have su- success after sport? Yeah, so that was awesome. one of the first things. And then I was, we were driving around neighborhoods and saw black people with right. nice houses and nice cars. I said, I can do this. Right? Right. Uh, and that was that was really probably one of the biggest moments for me in terms of going to the university. 
so when I got there, you know, it's a huge surprise, a, a big welcome. I, I saw athletes who were better than I was. I'm yeah. thinking, oh my God, this guy could jump out of the gym. I can barely touch the rim. I know exactly <laughs> right? what you mean. Six four, right? It's like oh, that was an eye opening. Um, but you know, it's just uh, you know, I was I was there uh, at Maryland uh, first year. I didn't play a lot. Second year played a little bit. Third year didn't play at all. Fourth year I started. Um, uh, just a wonderful experience. Wonderful university. Uh, I was there during difficult times. I was yeah. there when uh, a teammate of mine, Lynn Bias, passed away as well. Yeah, that was that. Had, I mean, that was the whole nation was felt that right, even in D.C. So we all felt that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was um, you know, no nineteen-year-old kid, you know, uh, coming from a, a small town uh, has to go through that experience. I grew up quick. I grew up fast. Yeah. I grew up fast because at that time, you know, we we lost the support of fans. We lost the support of um, boosters, or season ticket holders. Um, and that was hard. It was hard yeah. because uh, I wasn't like to your your point earlier, Gus. I, I wasn't wasn't a great student, but it's okay. Yeah. And never saw drugs before because I coming from a small town. The, the the only thing I've ever saw before was a peel, a speed, right? Right. right. Any weed or cocaine or any of your 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 other drugs. Uh, so that was all new experience for me. And yeah. it, and then the media just kind of turned around and just talked about us as athletes and said, "Hey, you know, one, everybody's dumb. Number number two, everybody does drugs." I'm like. You gotta be kidding me! Right? Yeah. Uh, so that whole next two years um, after Lynn Lynn's passing was it was difficult for uh, for all of us. Uh, yeah, I could have easily be. transferred. I could easily transfer went to another school, um, and I talk about that in the book a little bit too. Just the just the importance of maybe understanding loyalty. Uh, I know one of the things that that that's, that we're struggling with uh, these days with our young athletes. Is a, a transfer from school to school. When, yes. Uh, not just one school, but multiple schools. Uh, the transfer portal, uh, both in men's and women's sports. Uh, just talk about basketball for a second. You know, over a thousand kids are transferring, and it's probably close to 1,500 kids transferring are in the portal as we speak. Uh, and again, the loyalty piece was a big deal for me in the yeah. reason why I end up staying at the University of Maryland. Uh, just, hey, I love the university. I uh, love my teammates. Um, it kind of felt like, you know, this is the right place for me at the right time. And I was felt like I was getting the right results and yeah. um, stayed there. And I'm glad I did because I probably wouldn't be having a conversation with you today. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that when you have such a tragedy like what happened with Len, you know, and then you're all under the scrutiny because the media has a real way of lumping everyone together, right? I've been through a lot of situations and they lump you in all these things. Yeah. Um, and you're not going to really convince anybody that it's any different, right? right yeah. You just have to go. So it feels like your team just got a little closer, right? Even though you weren't didn't show it, but your team stays together and, and you guys went through something that that you can't explain it, but it keeps you together. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of how it was? Oh man, you're you're right on point. It's really it's uh there was uh it was myself, Tony Massenberg, uh Dave Dickerson, John Johnson. Those we all came in together. Well, there's a couple other a couple other players who came in with us but ended up transferring. Yeah. But to this day, and uh, we just if it's we felt like we're the, the, the four guys who just kind of hung in there and, and and got through it. And we all had a little success, you know. Dave is a head basketball coach at um, up uh, South Carolina Upstate. And Massburg played in the league for what 50, uh, 50 yeah. 20 years. Uh, John started his career at Coca Cola, and so again, because of what we went through, the experience that we went through, uh, I felt like we can. Go, I, personally, I felt like I could. If I can go through this, there's not anything that I cannot go through. Right. Because right? it yeah. was. It was. It wasn't fun. No, it couldn't have been at, at, at all. And uh, I'm sorry about your teammate. I mean, I've, I've 
watched a lot of those shows on him and and you talk about somebody who could jump out of the gym right i mean i went to tulsa and when i got there i'm from a little town that we had 19 guys on my football team i get to tulsa <laughs> with 90 dudes and they're all from texas and arkansas and oklahoma and i'm like why do i even belong here <laughs> right right yeah you know what i mean it's like you go from being the guy yeah. to being back at the bottom again and so mm -hmm. but that's a humbling experience and it teach just teaches you about working hard so when you you go through all this in college so when you're leaving you're in your senior year uh you finish the season what is going through your mind what were you thinking of uh, what was your next step that's a, that was a great question because uh, at that point, um, what would happen back in that day, back in a day, <laughs> uh, was that your college coach would help you uh, either one, play overseas or get you a tryout for right. an NBA team. Uh, our college coach uh, was let go from the University of Maryland as Bob Wade at the time. So, you know, let me rewind if I can. Yeah. Uh, um, the end of my sophomore year and going into my junior year, I realized the chances of me playing in the NBA were a little slim because I was sitting on the bench, right? I wasn't playing. Right. Uh, so I started to reach out to, uh, and again, it was just basically out of grace, to be honest with you, start reaching out to different people. Uh, we, had a, we had a Nike rep at the time my mentor today, who's now the senior vice, vice president of Brand Jordan. His name is Howard White. Right. Uh, Howard used to be, he used to call upon University of Maryland. I found out what he did. I'm like, what a cool job. Right. I told our coaches that every time Mr. White came to the university, will you call me? I'll do whatever. I'll stop what I do. I'm going to run up and say hello to him. Fast forward. I graduating, I've been in contact with Mr. White the last year and a half. Um, Mr. White says, hey, you know, we don't have anything at this time. We don't have any jobs. He said, there's a job in Memphis, but it's at the warehouse. I'm not quite sure that's the right place for you. Fast forward, I end up working at, working for Pitt D. Bowes, you know, sold copiers. And uh, love the uh, it's great industry. Wasn't the right industry for me. Right, right. I was watching grass grow. Right, <laughs> it, <laughs> that is hard. Like you're, you're, you're a sports guy and going to tell guy. God, yeah, that was not. <laughs> so I end up. Um, I, I had a friend who worked for the Washington Wizards, and I said, you know, right, right up my alley. Yeah. And in the meantime, uh, I end up interviewing for the Washington Wizards. This is how naive, and I guess a little. Um, confident I was at the time. I told uh, the folks at the Washington Bullets back in the day, uh, I'm only here temporarily. Nike's going to call me. And when they call me, I'm going to go to work for Nike. They still hire me anyway. Wow. I love that. They like <laughs> we so we get through the first season and I thought it was the best job ever, Gus. I'm selling oh, yeah. tickets. I'm having conversation with lawyers and you know, CPAs and doctors about season tickets. I'm the expert. I just finished playing basketball. I can right. talk to them about the game of basketball. Yeah. Uh, went through that process, ended up getting a call uh, uh, that next summer. Uh, it was from Mr. White. Now, keep in mind, I always stayed in contact with Mr. Yeah. White with a letter, a phone call, just to check in to say, hey, I'm available whenever you're ready. He says, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yep. Man. End up working for Nike for 15 years. Uh, here's what's interesting. And, and here's where I tell a lot of our young people today, because uh, I get a chance to speak around the, the country, is um, you don't know who's watching you. Right. And this is yeah. the, really this message to parents as well, to their kids. When you're when you're in your gym, you don't know if there's coaches around there. You don't know if there's boosters around there watching your kids play. But Mr. White uh, knew everybody from the Washington Wizards, all the way from the CEO to the president uh, to the VPs. And he asked every one of them, what kind of a person is Greg Nard? They all gave me great reviews. That's why he hired me. 
Right. Yeah. And you don't even have to do an interview because they didn't have to do an interview. Yeah. 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 No, so, that that's an amazing story. I love that. Yeah. Be, and I think that's such a valuable lesson is that you never know who's watching. That's why you always have to be at the top of your game. You can't let your guard down. And we've learned that through social media now, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, right. It, like at any time, anything can happen. But but that's such a good point for all of us because I've had those moments where I probably said stuff and didn't, you know what I mean? And and coaches would talk to other coaches. They all know each other. The, mm -hmm. the NFL is a other, small, right? the NFL is a small world, right? right? So that's why they always tell you never burn any bridges. That's right. That's you know exactly right. and. Sometimes you don't understand that until it's too late, but um, it's always a good lesson. And if you can learn it before it happens, then uh, that's a great point that, you know, what you just what you what you just told us about, uh, you know, somebody's always watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of that, hey, our fans are always watching. Hey, we're, everyone, we're talking with Greg Nard. I want to thank you for joining us on Huddle Up with Gus. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Up with Gus listeners, Manscaped. They sent me, uh, they hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations for their package 3.0 kit. Uh, so, you know, I want to show you guys what's in the perfect package, right? We all think we got a perfect package, but they sent me the perfect package 3.0 kit. I want to show you what they sent me. So it was crazy. It came in this great box. Uh, you know, and you can see what it says. They will thank you because they send us this awesome trimmer. They sent us, uh, you know, stuff that makes you smell better. And then, uh, you know, they sent me this great, uh, some boxers even, which you get, right? Protect them. And then, uh, you know, they sent me this uh, cool sack, I guess you want to call it, to store all your stuff in. So uh, it's been great. Uh, Manscaped sent me a bunch of products. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you can see it all on here. Uh, you know, you can go to manscaped.com and put in the code uh, Gus Ferrat. That's G-U-S-F-R-E-R-O-T-T-E. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use that code. But you can get a kit. You can get individual items like um, this way cool groomer that has a little LED light. Um, ceramic. Uh, these things come apart. They're waterproof. You can do a lot with them. So, uh, you know, Manscape is great. You know, it's it's funny. I remember when I was playing with the Denver Broncos, and I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, there was a gentleman who was playing on our team. And, uh, you know, if he ever hears the story, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, he brought his own clippers in one time. And he used it to trim his beard up, his goatee and everything. And uh, he had them there for about two or three weeks. And he goes in around the corner. He walks in. And there's a person, another player, that is actually manscaping with his beard trimmer. So, you know, one of the things is you don't want to use the same trimmer down there that you use up here. So uh, he kind of freaked out a little bit. And he said, hey. How long have you been using that tool there? And he said, well, it showed up here about three weeks ago and I've been using it ever since. So, you know, there is a lesson learned that, uh, you know, don't leave things out. And probably if it would have just said Manscaped on it, we wouldn't have had that issue. But it's probably one of the funniest uh, taking care of your ball stories I've ever heard or been around in the locker room in the NFL. So uh, it's a great story. Um, but, you know, I always said there was no way to know. There was no name on it. And the guy was just using it. And another guy was using it. It was, it, it was not good. But it's a heck of a funny story. So one of the best I've ever heard in my 15 years playing in the league. Um, but, you know, there's so many great things about Manscaped and, and what they're doing. Uh, because, guys, you got to take care of yourself. Even though I got gray hair um, and getting older. But uh, you still have to maintain some sort of of uh grooming right and so um you know we all work out for me i like working in my yard doing those things now that i'm retired getting a little sweat on and everything you want to smell good uh you know you got to take care of yourself they got some great products 
Um, you know, this one, a little uh, ball deodorant. We all need that here and there. Um, after, you know, working the yard, taking a hike, doing a walk, whatever you do, um, it's a great thing. But uh, there's so many great products. Um, I want to thank Manscaped for sending them to me. Um, the Lawnmower 3.0, obviously, you can use it anywhere in your body. But I'm sure you guys have all seen the commercials. But uh, this is one just letting you know that uh, the Lawnmower 3.0 comes with the perfect kit. You can buy the Lawnmower by itself. You can buy all these products individually. They even sent me this wonderful shirt. And you can see the back. Your balls will thank you. And then here's the front. So it's an awesome shirt. They have great gear. And you know what? Sometimes you can just sit back take care of your balls a little bit and, and, and read the paper. So I think Manscaped even has their own daily news, so which is great. So don't forget that uh, you can go to the code Gus Ferrat, and uh, that's G-U-S-F-R-E-R-O-T-T-E, uh, and you can save 20% on any products, the complete, the perfect uh package gift set and uh you know you can save 20 percent and get free shipping so use the code gus ferrat g-u-s-f-r-e-r-o-t-t-e hey everybody spells my name wrong they even spelled it wrong in the back of my pro bowl jersey so you know i gotta i gotta help you guys out so don't forget how important it is that you use these products take care of yourself down below and have some fun right there's nothing closer to you than your little buddies so Use the lawnmower. Uh, use the code Gus Ferrat. Save twenty percent and get free shipping. And uh, order some great Manscaped products. Hey everyone, welcome back to Huddle Up with Gus. I'm your host, Gus Farad. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us in the uh, Sounder uh, uh, F. I'm sorry, let's start over here. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm the host, Gus Farad of Huddle Up with Gus, and I wanna thank you for joining us in the 1631 Digital News Studio, and I appreciate Sounder FM for hosting us on their platform. And I also wanna thank Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. Put in my code, Gus Ferrat, all caps, and get 20% off and free shipping. Today, uh, we, we're getting back. Uh, Greg has been wonderful. It's his birthday, so let's all wish him his, a very happy birthday. Uh, but we've been talking about your career whole way up to now. You just were with the Washington Bullets, or I guess the Wizards now. but uh, And then you just got Howard White said, hey, we want you to come over to Nike. So tell me what that was like and your excitement when you first step into the building. Oh, geez. So, uh, <laughs> um, again, it's a, a dream job. Uh, right. My first week uh, on the job, um, my first week on the job was a trip in Carmel, California. We Nike does a coaching trip with oh, some wow. of the top coaches around the country. And it was uh, it was basketball trips with basketball coaches. So my first week in the job, it's uh, – and me and my my wife at that time on a trip. It's uh, coaches, all the top Dean Smith, uh, Coach K was not with us, Lute Olson, uh, just some top college coaches. And then you had MJ, you had Barkley, you had Scotty Pippen, you have BG Armstrong on this trip. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is right. my <laughs> first week of the job. First right, I'm week. Done. Right. Yeah. Second week on the job, uh, Mr. White, because now I'm reporting to Mr. White because he ended up at, he was the East Coast foot rep. He goes moves to Portland and becomes the uh, director of uh, uh, NBA. Oh wow! Um, my second uh, and by the way, uh, Howard White uh, uh, was uh, Michael Jordan's guy. Um, a business manager for oh, wow. still is today uh, for so many years. Actually, he was, if you you watch the documentary on Michael, you would see uh, Howard uh, in the um, in the documentary. Uh, so um, my second week on the job, uh, Howard says, hey, "Hey, hey, Greg, I need you to go to L.A. and work uh, uh, with Michael uh, because I can't be there." 
on the set of Space Jam. <laughs> Second week? <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, my like, gosh. Okay. What do I do? I, I want, you, want you to be there. I want you to you know, kind of be the liaison between MJ and the uh, production company. Okay. Perfect. I'm like, you're kidding me. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. So my first three years at, at Nike was, again, it, it was amazing. It's uh, uh, I worked as the East Coast field rep, and I worked as the liaison between the NBA players in our corporate office. Uh, and great experience. That was when Chicago was on fire. This is, what, uh, 90, 92 to 95? 92 right. to 95. So, in, so Chicago was on fire. Um, um Great experience, Penny Penny Hardaway, Gary Payton, oh, yeah, yeah. Charles. You know, I got a chance to work with all the NBA players at the time, and some of them today, to this day, are still friends of mine. And it's just again, that's the first three years, and I just again, I, I tell people all the time, Gus, uh, I didn't play in the NBA, which was a dream, but I work in the NBA, so it's still a dream to me, and it's still amazing. Still get you know, excite, excitement every morning that I wake up and get a chance to go in the office and get a chance to watch people like Dirk Nowinski and Luka Doncic and, you know, Christoph Porzingis. It's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm pinching myself still. So yeah. I go through three years with the, uh, with the, uh, with the NBA uh, at Nike. They said, if you understand the product side and you understand product processes, which is, uh, the the uh, the life of product from the beginning to the end, which means from the design to the sourcing to development to the factories to all the way product in the retail stores. If you understand that, you can navigate your way all around the campus, or you can be in different jobs. So, uh, how big is their campus? Uh, the campus, well, back back when I was uh, with Nike, and I left Nike back in two thousand seven. Uh, there's about 5,000 people on campus. Wow. And now I, I haven't been back in a few years, but I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 10,000 people on campus. Wow. Now That's around amazing. the world, they, they probably have probably 40, 50,000 people around the world. Now don't hold me to that now. I'm just throwing out some numbers. Yeah. So, so how do you, how do you learn that whole production, that whole system? What did you do to, to figure that out? Yeah. So I left, people thought I was crazy because I left a, a job that was working with athletes and traveling to and from games and about 67 NBA games. A year. Right. But I, I wasn't, I didn't want to be comfortable there. Right. I didn't want to, cause I didn't want to get to a point where I was, I was ever stagnant. Right. So, but I'm going to learn this products uh, side. So I went on the product side and work as a product line manager for basketball apparel. So in basketball apparel, and at this point, Jordan apparel, Jordan yeah. was not his own brand at that time. Oh, so yeah. I had a chance to work with Michael uh, a lot then because, you know, I helped create the look of new seasons, uh, new apparel every season, which was just a cool experience because you, you, you pick up a piece of fabric and you say, oh, that's the right fabric. The tearaway pants that you talked about earlier. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like I created back in the day a tearaway short. Oh, right? yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which was a great experience. I did that for for two years. So did 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 Michael look at everything? Absolutely, was he very involved. He was super involved through the entire process. And what I it's funny because I created four athletes uh, and also worked with Tiger, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but what I created is the uh, some timeline for the product for, yeah. for athletes, and the timelines consisted of we show them a rough sample one. We show them almost a finished sample two, and then we show them the final sample three before we go to retail. Yeah. So we created, that's what we created for, for the athletes. And it's just timelines. Uh, and uh, for the apparel timelines back in the day was about an 18 month process. And uh, now that I think that the timeline's a lot shorter. Uh, so footwear, when you, when, were you just doing, when you say apparel, were you just doing like shirts and shorts and pants and things like that? You weren't doing the shoes? No, not all. I just focused on apparel. Yeah. Okay. So I did. Yeah. I did the. Um, I worked a lot alongside with the uh, the footwear side, but I, I don't know the details of uh, somewhat similar in terms of the product processes and how the timeline. Actually, the timelines are shorter for 
footwear than it is apparel. So I did that for, for two years. I get a call out of the blue from uh, Mr. Knight and, and, and Howard and says, hey, we just signed a young guy just coming from Stanford. He's deciding that he's going to leave college early. His name was Tiger Woods. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> right. I'm like, who, who is that? <laughs> Tiger Woods, okay. Um, and they said, well, he's a golfer, a uh, pretty good golfer. Just won, just won his third amateur uh, at uh, Pumpkin Ridge, which is in Portland. Um, I heard about it, uh, Pumpkin Ridge, the amateur being there, but I didn't know anything about golf at that time. Yeah. Uh, but here's what I understood, and here's why Mr. Knight and Howard came to me. They understand, one, I knew the product processes, and number two, I know how to work with athletes. Yeah. Uh, just for the fact that, you know, one, being an athlete, being an athlete, one, but also, two, the first three years working with the NBA players. So, again, you don't get asked to do jobs if you don't, you know, if you don't knock it out of the park on your previous. Right, job, right. Right. And that's something else that I get the chance to have conversations with with people trying to get into the sports industry. Um, so, yeah, so I kind of go through that process and I, I'm like, yeah, we should probably sit down and talk. So we sit down and we, we have good conversations, Tiger and I and his dad and actually his Mr. Howard at the time. And we just we just kicked it off great and uh, ended up working with him from 1997 to um, 2007, uh, 2006. Mr. Knight asked if there's a, there's a young lady out in um, Hawaii. She's um, – what, she was 16 at the um she was 14 at the time oh yeah she's gonna be really good he says i need you to go out i need you to recruit her and sign her to nike when she turned pro did that for two years signed up signing michelle Lee. michelle wow. Lee. um great experience wow you've been with some of the amazing ones so so were you the reason that that tiger uh wears red on sunday <laughs> no that, that was pretty great <laughs> yeah that he always has done that. Uh, his mom, that was a big deal for for his mom and wearing the red. Um, she just thought it was a power color. Yeah. Uh, and um, she felt like if he wore that, man, he's going to be a Superman on Sundays or on final day. And he just, to this day, he wears this uh, Sunday red. So you must have got to know him pretty well. Was he, because I mean, did he love playing other sports or was he always just about golf? You know, he, uh, growing up, Tiger played a little baseball because his baseball. dad was a baseball player as well. Uh, so he played a little baseball. Um, but, you know, he, 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 he loved to, he, he's a, he loved to learn of different sports. You know, yeah. uh, he wanted to learn how to shoot. He wanted to learn how to th throw football. We would, we would, we would leave a tournament on a Sunday, Gus, and we would go back, uh, just the two of us, we would go back to his house in Orlando. And, you know, we had some time. You, that Monday you take off. Or uh, actually, we would, we would, sorry, we would arrive on Sunday night. Yeah. Right? Uh, after the tournament on Sunday. We'd get back to Orlando at the time where he was living. Now he lives in uh, Jupiter, Florida. Right. And um, so we would have the next day and a half just the two of us. And we would be throwing football, man. He wanted to know how to throw a spiral. I was teaching <laughs> how to throw a spiral. He would teach me how to, you know, fly fish. We was just, we would play baseball. We would throw baseball. We just do things brothers would do. Oh, and, that's awesome. Uh, so he would, he, he, you know, he learned how to scuba dive. He learned how to cave dive. And, oh, wow. Uh, he just, once he sets his mind that he's going to do something, he's all in. Yeah. So what? So what is that like to see somebody rocket so fast? Right. Like you were with him. You've seen him, like not only mature but just grow at an extreme rate. I mean, he just took off, and you probably got to be with him through all that. And and um, that had to be an amazing experience. Oh, it was phenomenal. You know, I worked with him his first eight years of his career. Uh, I think it was 11 major championships. Yeah. Uh, that uh, 10 or 11 major championships. It's phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal to see, um, see greatness. Yeah. Uh, got a chance to see a little greatness with Michael. Um, 
I didn't work with Michael like I work with Tiger, uh, but uh, I did get a chance to work with him and get a chance to see uh, him and just kind of see see what made him tick, right? Yeah. And there's some common denominators between the you know greatness and it was just it was an amazing eight years. You know, get a chance to go to the Masters in '97. All right, it's a little country boy from Wilmington, Ohio who knew nothing about golf is at the masters and spends eight straight years at the Masters. It's pretty freaking cool. That's the hard, one of the hardest tickets to get in. in, in well, not, not only that, but you know, you talked about when coming from Wilmington, there wasn't a lot of diversity. Mm-hmm. The masters didn't have a lot of diversity for a long time. Right. Uh, also, yeah. Gus, you're, you're right on. And, and here's, here's, here's what I love about, uh, Augusta National, um, the change, the changes that they have made over the years. Yeah, uh, and one is it's one is diversity. You know, when 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 we arrived in 1997, I say we arrived because we arrived together. When we arrived in 97, he wins the Masters in 98. Uh, and this is a, gives me goosebumps to this day. But uh, the Masters, the staff. Right, the executives there understand what just happened the year before and opened up doors for people who work there. You know, right. a lot of people work there are just people of color, right? And they just kind of said, you know what, we have to change our way of thinking, and they did, and it was absolutely awesome. beautiful. And some of the stories that were told uh, have things have changed at the Augusta National. It's just it's been pretty amazing. And if you think about sports and you've seen it personally how sports can unite us and bring us together from people from all different backgrounds even when there's animosity or hate or whatever um, sports has a way of kind of pushing that divide and bringing us all together I feel Mm -hmm. like and uh, you've probably seen it at you've seen it at the highest level I'm sure yeah you know I, I it's, it's, it's my life. Right. And, uh, you know, being with the Mavericks, Dallas Mavericks, the last seven years and, you know, just sitting in the stands and, you know, we got our capacity there is what 19, five, 19, one or something like that. Yeah. And just to see, see everybody come together, especially, um, you know, over this last year uh, has been pretty, I, I just think it's spectacular in terms of, when we were able to allow fans back into the arena, man, yeah. the, the joy, the excitement of just being in an arena, watching sports, seeing people, man, they were cheering. We had one. Of oh my gosh. Ball. Yeah. They were cheering. They were dancing. It was amazing. And I think to your point, uh, Gus, it's just, that's what sport does. It just, it just unites people. It brings everybody back together. So are you going to have your boss read your book? Because sometimes I watch him when uh, during a game and he's like one of those dads in the court, right? <laughs> he's yelling at the ref. He's, he's so excited. Mark, Mark gets so, I mean, he just loves the Mavericks, right? He just loves it. Like when you watch him, he's just so involved. And I don't know how many owners you see doing that. Well, there's only two that I know, and Mark is one, and then the new owner at uh, for the Clippers is another one who who does uh, who who they're just passionate about the game. Mark is Mark loves this, you know. Uh, uh, he loves his team. He loves you know these players. Um, you know, if you talk to players around the league, they'll talk about you know how he. He treats players different than any other owner. Um, yeah. And again, that's not coming from me. It's just coming from this conversation that I've had with different players um, who have come through the Mavericks organization. But he's he, he's amazing. He, 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 he just gets it. He likes it. He has fun with it. Uh, and he he's he's like you and I, man. We're, we might look like nice people, but we're pretty competitive. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You want to step on my neck and I want to step on yours, right? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. You, right? Well, I mean, he's such an enamoring figure because of Shark Tank and everything else. I mean, you see that he's competitive. Absolutely. He's smart. Yeah. Um, you know, 
And he's got a lot of Pittsburgh in him when I watch him. It's kind yeah. of funny. Like, you know, it, it doesn't leave you once you, you go away. And so I'm waiting for him to come and bring back a Pittsburgh basketball team because we, you know, we could use another sport here, you know, because yeah. our Pirates haven't been doing so well. Yeah. But um, so so you're at the Mavericks. Tell us a little bit about what you do for the Mavericks. Yeah, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a senior vice president. Uh, this is my seventh season. Um, with the Mavericks. And uh, I oversee uh, this four departments that I oversee now. I oversee our youth basketball, which uh, includes our camps, our clinics, our combines. And we touch about probably 20,000 kids a year uh, in yeah. our basketball. Are, do you just stay in the Dallas Fort Worth area? Yeah. Basically. Uh, yeah. With NBA teams and uh, probably similar to NFL teams as well, but uh, you can only, work within 75 miles north oh, okay. and west of the arena yeah so, yeah we're staying in the dfw area so i i i, I manage um the the youth basketball space and, and i'm proud to say that we're probably if you talk to anybody in the nba one of the most innovative youth basketball programs in the nba and just really just because our breadth of different programs you know, yeah we got, we got programs from you know, our mini Mavs, which are, you know, four year, four year olds all the way up to kids at the high school level. That's uh, great. We have recreational kids. We have elite kids. The other area I, I oversee is really the, the player relations side. The player relations uh, side is uh, really working with players uh, to help them just get out in the DFW community. Uh, yeah. Work with our uh, community partners in Love and, and a lot of this comes from from Mark and our our CEO Sent Marshall. They just do a phenomenal job of bringing in the right people, right? Yeah, and helping them understand the importance of giving back to the, your community, give back to these fans and our players. I probably I'm not exaggerating. I guess probably best in class when it comes to community appearances. Yeah, over this last year we last year with COVID. You know, at the beginning of the hiatus, uh, NBA hiatus, we probably did 60 appearances with the players, which is off the charts. Yeah, which is right? great. And guys just want to give back, want to help, want to do anything we can for this community of Dallas, which is which is really cool. And then I um, um, I oversee Mavs Gaming, which are our eSports NBA 2K team. Uh, four years ago, the NBA created this NBA 2K League. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Know all about it. Yeah, so there's there's 23 teams in the league. Uh, it's craziness, man. Uh, it's it probably is. One of the, probably one, and I and I told someone this maybe uh, a couple of weeks ago. One of the the great things that happened to my career at this time, it helped me understand this this, this space of the social platforms. It helped me understand um, viewership and the different analytics and what it means to uh, really at the end of the day just you know, selling sponsorship to um, um, understanding the importance of, uh, you know, the different social platforms. Right. Twitch, which is which Twitch is huge. huge. Yeah, it's huge, yeah. right? NFL uh, a year ago had the Super Bowl on Twitch. And what it, what it is, it's you're touching the consumer that I'm not familiar with, but I've gotten to know and gotten a chance to to grow with over these last three years that I've kind of oversee oversaw uh, this 2K team. But it's two coaches. We got a head coach, we got an assistant coach, and we got six players. And yeah. we play remotely against different teams. And it's uh, amazing their their ages, right? Like like esports is like almost that 15 to 22. And like after 22 years old, you're almost done. Like yeah. you're, you're, you're too old. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, it's like your reaction time, your, you know, the way you play and, and, and you have to do it. Uh, it's a, esports isn't a, it's really come a long way in like five, you know, probably from when we were playing Atari, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah. yeah. It's, know, for us, it's our, our target consumer is a little older. Um, you know, you have to be uh, in order to play in the two K League. You have to be eighteen years old, and you know our oldest player is I think what 28, 29 years old. Yeah, that's it's awesome. The best, it's the best two K players in the world. Yeah, and, uh, you know the the two K League and 
and Brendan Donahue, who's our commissioner for the league, it really has done a, a, a tremendous job in terms of just the growth side, not only here from a domestic standpoint, but also from an international standpoint. Uh, the sponsorship has grown. Uh, our partners uh, overseas, uh, Twitch numbers continues, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all the numbers that have increased significantly over the last uh, four years or since the uh, since we started the league. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a way to get fan engagement and then all the data and analytics and all the impressions that you get and trying to bring all that together to tell you how many actual people are following the Mavericks, but NBA total, you know, because it's not just the Mavericks that are big for you guys, but the whole NBA, right? Absolutely. Um, my, my son Gunner said, Dad, you got to get NBA dunk. It's like an app that you can get all the player cards on, right? And so I, I've always collected cards. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I don't have to go buy them. You can just get a pack of them every now and then on NBA Dunk. And it's pretty cool stuff. And it's just a, an incredible way. And I'm sure, like, when you have you have part of that data and analytics, like, it, it's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, with Mark doing AI and all this stuff right now, I mean, he's probably got – I mean, you probably hit a button. You know, it's probably like – what I could say when I first started in the NFL, we had to watch videotapes and put a tape in and tape out, tape in, tape out. Now it's all right on your iPad and you get every play you want. Right. Yeah. And we you probably can look at the data any way you want now. Any, any, any way you want, however you want. Uh, you know, I, we, we got dashboards, you know, dashboards of date and data, you know, folks going into the arena to or season ticket holder base to what we do on the Mavs gaming side, our social platforms. It's like, that's, again, that's how you're one, you're telling your story Two, you're selling sponsorship three you're, to your point, fan engagement, you know, that's right. what it's all about. And yeah, um, I would think that you have a boss who loves new technology, loves new experiences, whatever he can do to connect, you know, where a lot of people aren't like that. Mm -hmm. Mark's an innovator, you know, he wants, he wants to be best in class. Uh, he wants to, you know, he wants to be the first to come out with new products, new ideas, new thoughts. That's just who he is. You know, I've been so lucky, Gus. It's like a Phil Knight, another phenomenal oh, innovator. Mark is a phenomenal innovator. They just think, they just think, they think in a different planet that yeah. we're in, and which is really, really amazing. And then we got to say, I got a CEO who's just phenomenal too, and sent Marshall and what she has done since her arrival uh, three and a half years ago. We just, it, just a great organization with really great people. Yeah. Well, what an amazing career you've had. You have a book coming out. Uh, tell me the name of the book again. The ultimate assist. The ultimate and, assist. Uh, yeah, you can. Um, we'll launch. It will be released probably sometime in early um, early July. Uh, right now, it's in the hands of a designer, so I'm just waiting for the designer to come back with all the yeah design. Um, yeah, now you get to tell the designer what you like and what you don't like. Those <laughs> right, guys exactly. telling you right all the apparel. Well, I mean, I don't think we have enough time to go over everything. I think we hit it fast as we could today, Greg. And uh, you know, you just have an amazing career, and I'm sure that that Mark hired you because he found out from Phil, from Howard, from, you know, the guys at the, everybody, the, you know, like they said, they know about you. They know that the kind of person they're getting, because I can just tell from talking and we didn't even get to talk about your, your, your daughters and their careers. And like, it's just it has to be great. And you got to have a smile on your face every day when you wake up. Yeah. I'm super, super blessed. Uh, Gus, I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I just every day I enjoy what I do, passionate about what I do. And yeah. daughters who, uh, you know, I have one daughter who's married and she's the uh, assistant coach, uh, recruiting coordinator at the University of Oregon. I have another one who plays professional basketball. So it's just, you know, it's 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 still living a dream. Yeah. Yeah. What a birthday it's going to be. So, <laughs> right, uh, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing. I, I appreciate you. Um, I hope we can stay in touch because there's some things I have coming up with the NFL alumni that I would love to talk to you about going out to high school kids all over the country. Um, and I think that I've been dying to try and get the NBA involved. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, Mark's doing stuff back here in Pittsburgh that I know of with the, 
with the Readiness Institute and Penn State University. So it, there's a lot of connections, Greg. But uh, for you to come on my show, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, obviously you're an amazing person because those people that you've been with to have faith and put their um, time and effort into you tells me that what kind of person you are because you're not going to be around those people if they don't trust you and they don't know what kind of character you have. So this little farm guy from Wilmington has really made it big. So it's, it's awesome. And that, that goes, doesn't matter where you're from, you put in hard work, it's going to happen. That's right. Yeah. And this, that's part of one of my core values is this hard work and growth, growth mindset. So well, tell cool. of our, tell all our fans how they can find you and how they can follow you. Yeah, you know, again, for the book, if you go to gregnard.com, yeah, you, you can get updates uh, on the book. Um, LinkedIn, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, social media platforms, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, I, I'll accept you. Come come and join me. Come, come say hello. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And I look forward to the Mavs going a long way into these playoffs. Well, thank you. Uh, so do I. And, and I hope that's the case. Gus, yeah. thanks for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's no, thank you. Meet you too. Yeah. yeah, it was great meeting you too. Yeah. And and uh, I appreciate you joining me on Huddle Up with Gus. Hey, everyone, that's another show. Uh, what a great talk we had today with um, uh, Greg Nard, you know, and happy birthday, Greg. And so I want to thank 1631digitalnews.com for, for hosting us and also uh, Sounder FM for hosting us on their podcast platform. And then also remember, Go to manscaped.com, put in my code Gus Farad, all caps, and get 20% off and free shipping. So, everyone, have a great day, and thank you again, Greg. Thank you. And that's a wrap, sports fans. Thanks for joining in the fun at the 1631 Digital Studios for another action pack Huddle Up with Gus, featuring 15-year NFL quarterback Gus Farad. Huddle Up with Gus is proudly produced by 1631 Digital Media and is available on Apple Music.